Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. I'm sure you know that cold weather puts an added strain on the battery in your car. That's why right now is a good time to have that battery checked and recharged, if need be, for better performance during the colder days ahead. Your car savers have complete battery testing equipment and can tell in a jiffy if your battery isn't up to par. They've got brand new, powerful Atlas batteries, too. No matter how you figure, it makes good sense to get a car saver battery checkup now at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. And now, tonight's story, Dead on Arrival, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, believe me, I do have a job that's too tough for me to handle, and only you can help me. You see, I'm away from the man I love very much, and the only thing that will bring us together is your meeting me at the bus terminal the very moment I get there at 10.06 Wednesday, love, Brooksy. <laughs> Hotel Bristol Coffee Shop, 200 rooms, adjoining bus terminal. Club breakfast, 75 cents. Georgie, <laughs> I told you I already had breakfast. Well, you'll have another one. Oh, Brooksy, <laughs> your cousin's wedding did something to you. You look, uh, well, radiant. Oh. Good enough to serve on a silver platter. Oh, hey, that's an idea. Way to George, bring this girl a silver platter. It. Everybody's looking at Well, let them. I'm happy, so what? Oh, so am I. You know what happened when Mary threw her bridal bouquet? I caught it. When a girl catches a wedding bouquet, it's supposed to mean she's going to get married. Really? Must be something new. Bus leaving in five <laughs> minutes for Fairfield, Clayton, and Coatesville. Nah, seriously, Brooksy. Without you in the office, I don't know where a thing is, and then I... What's the matter? George, see that gray-haired gentleman at the table in the corner? Yeah, I noticed you looking at him before. Oh, he sat just like that in the bus, too. His top coat buttoned up to his neck, all tense and, well, frightened. Oh, uh-huh. He doesn't seem to be touching his coffee. I thought the trip was making him ill. You know how it is with people sometimes. So I tried talking to him to take his mind off of him. Uh-huh. You know, things about the office and you. Oh, no wonder the poor man's not feeling well. Well, it was a long trip, and I'm the friendly type. Now, that redhead over there, going into the hotel bar... Ah, nice. I spoke to her, too, but not about you. Uh-huh. There's a man wanted sign in her eyes. Her face is too beautiful, her legs are too nice, and she has practically no waist at all. I wonder what holds her together. <laughs> well, believe it or not, she works for the journal, a reporter. She was away on a vacation. Wait she a minute, was... Angel. What? That gentleman we were talking about, I think he wants to see us. He just sort of motioned me over there. What do you suppose he wants? Well, why not ask him? Come on. If he's ill, I hope there's something we can do for him. That's right. Someday I may be somebody's grandfather. Yes, I know. I've got it all arranged. Uh, yeah. Oh, hello. Say, you want to drink that coffee? It'll make you feel better. Oh, sorry, young lady. Don't want to impose, but... but oh, no. Uh, Wait a minute. Easy, uh, sir. Don't try to get up. You're in pretty bad shape. Uh, yes, I know. Would... Would you do me a favor? Yeah, sure. Would you register me here at the hotel? See that I get upstairs? Of course. There you are now. Just hold on to my arm. Thank you. Hey, you get on the other side. Uh, all right. That's it. All right, now, just take it easy. Here we go. Right through here to the lobby. On the bus, the young lady was telling me about you. Don't try to I... talk now, sir. Brooksy, take the gentleman over to the elevator. Wait there till I sign in. Yeah. Oh, uh, what name shall I give? A na- name? Oh. Well, uh, sure, you have to have one. Uh, uh, Redman. Why shouldn't I use it now? Philip Redman. Okay, I'll be right back. 
No. We'll be upstairs in a minute, Mr. Redman. You'll be all right. In, uh, in my coat pocket here, miss. Will you take that out? What? Go ahead, please. Your wallet? That's right. Money. Tell your friend to take as much as he needs. But why? What for? Please hurry. Get, get me upstairs. <laughs> Easy now, Mr. Redmond. Yeah. Just rest back in this chair. Yeah. Have you got that water, Brooksy? Yes, here it is. Oh, oh. You ought oh. to lie down. Yes, and let's get that coat off. Uh, no, no. No, I'll be all right in a minute. I, I know I will. I, I must. Wait, I'll look in his wallet. Maybe he has friends, relatives in town, and we can... No, I have nobody here. You must help me. Whatever money you need. Yes, of course. George, I think we ought to call a doctor. Yeah. Hey, it's funny. The name in this wallet is Walter Haskell. And he said Redmond. Oh, oh, oh. George, while you call the doctor, I'm going to get this coat off and try to make him comfortable. No, please don't. Oh, no. You're going to do just as I say. And... George. Oh, yeah. I think we'd better call the police as well as the doctor. He's been shot. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, let me have that glass of water. All right, now here, Mr. Redmond, try to drink this. Uh, don't call anybody. Listen. Please, no time to talk now. we got to do something about you. Uh, you must get me there. Nothing else matters. Get you where? What are you trying to say? Get me cold. Huh? Well, here, here you are. No, no. But you said George get me... Georgie's fever. She doesn't know what he's talking about. Cold. Cold. There's nothing in it, not a thing. George, he's... Oh. Yeah, we can forget the doctor, Brooksy. Just the police. Oh, no. Oh! Easy. Oh. Yeah, hello. What? Coming up here? Well, yes, but... Okay, never mind, thanks. Brooksy. What is it? I don't know, but we got to get out of here fast. George, never mind, come on, just do as I say. No, no, not the elevator. This way, the stairs. Stay back out of the corridor so they won't see us. Who? What is it, George? That was the desk clerk on the phone. He said two of Mr. Redmond's friends were on their way up. But he said he didn't know anybody in this That's town. just it. What do you make of all this? Ruling them out as friends. They're probably here to finish the job. They started somewhere else. You think that they're... Well, what are we going to do? You beat it downstairs and call Lieutenant Johnson. Tell him exactly what happened. And you? I'll stay right here and see if I can get a look at our two visitors. Well, be careful. Get they going, might, Brooksy. Might... I'll see you down in the lobby. <laughs> What took you so long, Brooksy? Trouble getting Lieutenant Johnson and trouble making him believe me when I did. Oh. They're on their way. Did you see who the men were? No, darn it, I couldn't without being seen myself. Well, what now? Well, you keep your eye on that elevator. Take a good look at everybody who comes down. And where are you going? See the desk clerk. <laughs> oh, uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Redman? I'm not Mr. Redman. But you... Oh, now, really, now, really... The guests in our hotel are in the habit of registering under their right names. Well, I'm sure the Hotel Owners Association will be glad to hear that. Now, listen, Mr. Uh... Platt. Horace Platt. Okay, those two men who went upstairs, did they ask for Mr. Redmond by name? Well, no, not exactly. Uh-huh. They merely said they wanted the room number of the party of three that just went up in the elevator. Uh, you, the elderly gentleman, and the young lady. They said they were friends of yours. I see. Anything wrong? Well, did they see the registration card by any chance? Of course. I had to look up the room number. I don't keep everything in my head. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, that old gentleman, whoever he is, should know better than to go out again in his condition. Go out? What do you mean? Oh, really? Now, you don't have to bark at me. But a man of his age should certainly get over the night before. That is, before starting off on another street. Look, Horace, do you know what you're talking about? Well, I certainly saw him. Just a few minutes ago, his two friends had to hold him up. And the three of them went staggering out of the lobby together. Maybe I can still catch up with them. Oh, now, really, you can't go charging through our lobby like that, knocking people out of the way. Who are you, anyway? I saw you running out of the lobby. What happened? Plenty. Well? Brace yourself, Brooksy. 
Those two guys took Redmond or Haskell or whoever he is for a walk and a ride. What are you talking about? They did that while I was waiting for you to get that call through to Johnson. But, but that's impossible. He was I know, him. I know. This seems to be our day for the impossible. The doorman saw three men come out a few minutes ago, one of them a little under the weather. They piled into a car and drove off. Oh, you know, I'm kind of glad the police will be taking over from here in. Well, I'm afraid they're going to have to put up with me. What do you mean? Brooksy, when a client of mine hires me to look after him, I stick with him. Dead or alive. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Did you ever stop to think that each time you buy motor oil for your car, you're making a mighty important decision? More times than not, it's the choice of motor oil that makes a big difference in engine performance and can actually mean dollars saved from excessive wear. Consider this fact when you buy motor oil. Heavy-duty RPM motor oil has consistently proven its ability to reduce wear and greatly increase the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. In addition, heavy-duty RPM motor oil gives extra protection against gummy carbon, acid, and corrosion. So if you want to increase time between overhauls and reduce repair bills, if you want top protection and performance from your car, if buying the best brand of motor oil is important to you, then switch over now to heavy-duty RPM motor oil. Next time you need oil, ask for and make sure you get heavy-duty RPM motor oil at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. A gentle, gray-haired man refuses to take off his topcoat. When he does, you make the startling discovery that he'd been shot. And afterwards, even more startling, his body is walked out of the hotel room by two so-called friends. Yes, these are the incredible ingredients of a nightmare that happens in the full blaze of noon. And even if your name is George Valentine, you're afraid you might wake up screaming... The redhead is still in the bar, George. Good. But why do you want to talk to her? And alone? Well, she did come in on that bus with you and Mr. Redmond. She just might know something. Meet you back here. Uh, hello. Well, where did you come from? And why didn't you get here sooner? I take it you wouldn't scream if I join you. How obvious can I be in a public place? Uh-huh. You know, you look like the kind of man who could provide a lot of excitement. Oh, by the way, what's the man's name? Valentine. George. And what can you suggest for excitement? <laughs> Depends how obvious I can be in a public place. I like you, Valentine. George. You look like the kind who let a girl walk on the outside. Oh, I see. In other words, a mug, a bruiser. You go for that type, don't you? <laughs> Could be. And what's the girl's name? Williams. Jenny. Of the journal. What? Yeah, we're going to have a little talk, Williams, Jenny. You'll place an ad in your paper, and then we'll get together in my office tonight. Here you are, bartender. Keep the change. <laughs> I looked in all the papers, Jenny, and there's not a word about Mr. Haskell's murder. Well, Claire, that's not so strange. The homicide boys don't like to cry murder without the good old corpus delicti as Exhibit A. We saw the corpus delicti, all right, Jenny. But from that point on, nothing makes sense. I know. Now, let's assume, and there's no reason why we shouldn't, those two men were the ones who tried to kill Haskell or Redmond. What did they want with his body? They must have had a good reason taking the chance they did. Two of them hustling him out of the lobby in broad daylight. When we find the answer to that, we'll be getting somewhere. I've got an off-the-record statement from Lieutenant Johnson. The police are doing everything they can. An arrest is expected momentarily. In short, they're getting nowhere fast. Yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't be of any help, George. I hardly even noticed the man in the bus. I know. This, um, this ad you had me put in the journal. Important. Anyone having knowledge of Philip Redman, kindly contact George Valentine. Address, phone number, etc. You, uh, sitting on something you should have told the police? I told you you'd get your story when it breaks. 
Besides, I'm just playing a hunch. Philip Redmond was the name the old fella gave me to register him at the hotel. Kind of fancy variation on the usual Smith or Jones. I don't know, Brooksy. I think he started to give the name we found in his wallet, Walter Haskell. But then he said, Redmond, why shouldn't I use it now? Remember? Yeah, that's right, I do. He was almost defiant about it. And you figure that anybody knowing of Philip Redmond can tell you about Walter Haskell. Yeah, something like that. I know it's only a hunch, but... Oh! Are you all right, George? Yeah, but yank out that cord on that desk lamp, quick. Good, that's better. We don't want any light. George, where are you? I'm here at the window. You see anything? Yeah, yeah, the other building. And all the windows in the world to shoot from. Darling, be careful. They can't see us now. It's a good thing that desk lamp threw your shadow off a little to the side. Yeah, that bullet was meant for my curly little head, all right. Jenny, your paper can have my testimonial for ads that get results. Hmm? Sure, that irresponsible Nimrod out there was undoubtedly somebody having knowledge of Philip Redman. Oh, and you can't say he didn't get in touch with you. Nice patter, but Oscar Levant does it better. There's at least one part of this puzzle that's beginning to make sense. They removed Mr. Haskell because they didn't want anybody to identify him as Redmond. Now, how do you get that? Because, Brooksy, now that they realize I know he was known as Redmond, too, they're out to get rid of me. That's something I'd worry about. Oh, I worry, all right. But I also found something for me to do. Yeah, what's that? I'm going over to the Bristol. I've got something to check with the desk clerk. Something our friends might have overlooked. Although I doubt it. <laughs> You two ladies stay here by the entrance. I'll be right back. All right, George. Yes, sir. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, oh, where's the other fellow who was on the desk today? Horace. He wasn't feeling very well. One of the boys had to take him home. Oh, I see. Kind of sudden-like. Yes, sir. I'm a friend of his. He asked me to take his place. Well, I guess you can help me. Yes, sir. Well, I want to look through your registration cards for today. I don't know if I can... Take my word for it. It's important. If you don't believe me, you can ask the police. Well, I guess it's all right. Uh, here, there are just a few. Okay, thanks. Uh-huh. Find what you want? No. No, I didn't. But don't take it to heart, friend. I didn't expect to. So long, and thanks again. Don't mention it. Bus leaving in five minutes. Fairfield, Clayton, and Coltsville. Well, George, what did you find? I was right. They didn't overlook a thing. Not there, huh? No. Anybody investigating would never find out by the records that a man named Philip Redmond registered here today. I don't think there's much doubt what this means. I think I know what you mean, and I don't like it. Those two walked out of here with our friend today because they didn't want anybody to know his real identity. Somehow they lifted the registration card to make sure... And they even tried to kill me to make doubly sure. You ought to pass the next round, George. Put yourself in the capable hands of Lieutenant Johnson. Those boys are still out to get you. And it could be anybody. Anybody out there in the street, here in the lobby. George Jenny's right. Let's turn this What was the old fella trying to tell us upstairs? If we at least knew that. Come on, Brooksy, think back. Just what did he say? Well, he was feverish, George. He kept saying he wanted to get somewhere. Was willing to pay you to help him, that's all. He was trying to tell us where, you remember? After he refused that drink of water, asked for his coat All and... I know is you'd better stay with plenty of people around you and you're back to the wall. Better still, pour out your troubled little heart to Johnson. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right, Jenny. Especially with Brooksy on the same spot with me. Come on. Last call, bus now leaving for Fairfield, Clayton, and Coatesville. Just wait a Lieutenant Johnson. Wait a minute, hold everything. What is it, Holy George? Holy... We just heard the answer in the beautiful pear-shaped tones of the bus dispatcher. I, I don't get it. Fairfield, Clayton, and Coatesville. Coatesville. That's what Redmond was trying to say. George! That's why he said coat, even after he refused it. There wasn't anything in that coat, and he wasn't feverish. He said, get coat. He was trying to say, get me to Coatesville. How can you be sure? He got off here in this terminal because it's the only place you can get a bus to Coatesville. It adds up. Could be, it could be. The only way to make sure is to go there and see if the name Redmond means anything in that town. If so, just what? Hey, Jenny. Yes? Here's what you can do for that story I promised for you. Check the morgue at the journal. See if Philip Redmond and Coatesville go together somehow. Right. 
What about you? I'll be waiting in the bus terminal there in the morning. Get there as soon as you can. Well, we'd better hurry, George, if we're going to make that bus. It's leaving. Not this time, Brooksy. You put yourself in the care of the good lieutenant. I don't want anything happening to you. See you in the morning, Jenny. Say, Bye. you can't go and leave me like this. Now, you hear me, George? You can't... Hold it. You got another passenger. Thanks. Oh, I just made it. Huh. Well, hey, you're not going to hog the whole seat, are you? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, now look, Roxy, I'm serious. Off you go. But the bus is already going. I know, I know. I'll stop it. But just this morning you said I was, well, indispensable. Come on now, out you go, if out you go. you do, go. I'll scream. I'll scream and tell the driver you're molesting me and then he'll throw you off. I don't care. Ah! Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's all right, driver. The lady just remembered she forgot to turn the gas off under the roast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sit down, you Benedict Arnold. Oh, I don't want to see another bus terminal as long as I live. Yeah. And that won't be long if we don't stick right out here with a madding crowd. This is a case of safety in numbers. Oh, I'm not afraid. Huh? Last night you were quaking in your little open-toed sandals. And now you're a blithe spirit. I'm with you, just the two of us, so I'm not afraid. Oh, women. From four o'clock this morning until now, five hours. I wonder what it feels like to lie down. Yeah. Jenny should be here soon. Anyway, there's nothing we can do until Coatesville wakes George, up. George, huh? that man over there, he keeps staring at us. Uh-huh. He's so... Well, he's so sinister looking. Mm, he does look a little ugly. You don't think he... That he's one of those... You know. I think we're going to find out he's headed this way. Oh, George. Calm down. Easy now. He wouldn't dare do anything in front of all these people. Yes, but maybe he's an exhibitionist. Eh, pardon me. Could you direct me to the local YMCA? Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, uh, uh, I think the gentleman at the information desk could help you. Oh, oh of course. I will stay at the Wild Straits Town. Oh, 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 This is certainly the nicest way to work up a persecution complex. Well, it's all over now. Hey, here comes Jenny. And if she makes any passes at you, I'll pop her right on her profile. Why, Angel, that's the nicest compliment a boy ever got. Hi. Nice place you got here. Mm, it's small, but we call it home. Of course, when we get some curtains... Okay, we'll... Brooksy, skip it. What'd you find out, Jenny? George, you got me on the trail of a real story, if it checks. Here, take a look at this picture. I found it at the morgue in the journal. Yeah. Oh, is that Redmond or isn't it? Sure. He's younger there, but it's the same man, all right. Well, that was taken 15 years ago when his face was in all the papers, the time he disappeared. Disappeared? Took a powder, vanished into thin air. He was only the mayor of this thriving little community. Whoa, Whoa what, what do, do you know? know? When he disappeared, he left a real mess behind him. All through his administration, he was playing footy with some big mobsters. Together, they took Coatesville for plenty. Very interesting. He seemed like such a nice gentleman. Maybe he was coming back because his conscience was bothering him. Doesn't matter why he was coming back. The point is, somebody didn't like the idea. Didn't like the idea of his coming back to life at all. For 15 years, he must have lived somewhere as Walter Haskell. And our unseen friends are still bent on keeping the name of Redmond dead and forgotten. They don't want anybody nosing back into the old scandal. Maybe there are big names involved. That could be it. Well, no wonder they're playing rough. I think you can unload this to the police now, George. No, no, not yet. Not till I try a little experiment. What? If we're the only ones who know that Redmond and Haskell are one and the same, why not trade in on it? Let's make our unseen playmates show their hand. Just how? By getting a list of Coatesville's hotels and... Well, seeing if curiosity doesn't kill something else besides cats. <laughs> Barrington Hotel is number three. You know, there are only three hotels in town, George. Uh-huh. And the other two were no soap. Look, George, maybe this scheme of yours is just a little too neat, huh? I don't think there's any doubt that they knew I took that bus here to Coatesville. By now, they should be here somewhere. Chances are they'd hold up in one hotel or another. Well, shall we try the old routine again? Yeah, sure, may as well. Here's the telegram. Go ahead. Slip the bellboy's little bribe. Mm, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, George. Mm. If somebody does claim that telegram, don't take any chances, will you? I won't, Brooksy. I... I just got home, remember? Hey, there goes the bellhop now. Paging Mr. Haskell. 
telegram for Walter Haskell. Now, keep your eyes open. Look around, Brooksy. Does that get a rise out of anybody? I don't know. There's several people Mr. looking Haskell, at it. Telegram for Walter Haskell. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him, I see him. Now, stay here, Brooksy. Uh, right here, boy. I'll take that. Oh, Mr. Haskell? Yes, that's me. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you. What? The... Appropriate little telegram, what? isn't it? Picked it out myself. Yeah, message number 18 for proud parents of a new son. What do you want? Let me read it for you. Now you can say with pride and joy, here's our very own little boy. <laughs> yeah, hello, Sonny. Don't tell me you're the desk clerk here, too. I don't know what you're talking about. You arranged to take poor Horace's place at the Bristol yesterday, didn't you? So you could get rid of Redmond's registration card? Incidentally, what hospital have you got Horace in? Look, I don't have to uh, answer... Uh, keep your hands out of your pockets. I got one of those things, too. Get away from me. Now, before... Right. Give me that. Now take this gun. It spoils your shape. All right, Buster. That's much better. George, this is the man at the That hotel. he is. That he is. Well, we got a bite, didn't we? Look, you... You just couldn't resist finding out who could be sending Walter Haskell a telegram, could you? What's really the name they got under your pinup picture in the post office? <laughs> he's the loquacious type, isn't he? Oh, he's just saving it all up for Lieutenant Johnson. And then he can talk and sing at the same time. <laughs> Not one, not two, but all eight. You probably know by now that means Chevron Supreme, the gasoline that gives you all eight high-performance qualities. Maybe you know, too, that these eight qualities are quick starting, fast warm-up, smooth acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, full power, economy mileage, and area blending. But the point I want to make is this. You'll never know what all this can mean in real driving pleasure until you try Chevron Supreme gasoline in your car. So why wait any longer? Next time you need gas, pull in and fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Would you mind telling me why are we going to the household fixtures department, Angel? You'll see. Okay. Hey, you know, our curious Mr. Rainey sang all right. Mr. Redmond did have pangs of conscience, and he was going back to tell all. Mary made the loveliest-looking bride. He was living in Fullerton for the last 15 years. His playmates kept an eye on him all the time. But he finally decided to turn Boy Scout. That's when they shot him. Somehow he managed to escape and got on that bus with you. I must buy a real nice wedding present for Mary and Bill. They found poor Redmond in the shack out in Flatland Meadows. And so everything is tied up in a neat little package. I wonder how much these chimes are. Twelve fifty. I'll take two of these. But, Angel, what's the other one for? If I live long enough, you'll find out. Huh. Welcome home, darling. Welcome home. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and directed by Kenneth Webb. Julie Bennett was heard as Jenny, Griff Barnett as Redmond, Forrest Lewis as Horace, Harry Bartell as Rainey, and Dick Ryan as The Dispatcher. Music by Gaylord Carter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.